So I've been working on the basket and I've made pretty good progress, but I've got to tell you folks, it takes a long time to do this by hand. And what I was just showing you how is I put my hand in the bottom and stretch it up to the top to make sure it gets the height it's supposed to have. But you see how that I've wrapped it, I came out, and now I'm curving back in. I'm ready to do another handle, so I decided to film this to show you how to do this handle. And it's taken quite a bit of rope. It's going to take you at least 50 feet of cased rope. So, let me lay this right in here and show you. This is how I'm now having to do the stitches, because as I come in, I have to be able to fit my hand in. And remember I was telling you that you, it's where you place the rope to sew it is how you cause your basket or container to either come in or go out to shape, change the shape. So I'm taking this rope and pushing it to the inside so that when I sew it on it you see the placement here, how it's coming in nicely? And I tell you, these are very sturdy. I'm very pleased with this. So now it's time to make a handle. And I had to think about this. How do I want the handle to be? And I've worked out this other side before I went to show you. So what I'm going to do is take and double the cased rope double it like this and that's going to be my handle and I've got to decide how big to make it because I do want it to come out away from the container so I'm going I've got these pins here okay let's start at that point how do you decide where to put the handle to make it equidistant well one thing I figured out is if you just squeeze the basket like this it'll automatically show you where the other side is and what I did with that is put two pins where the exact opposite side is so now I'm going to take this pin push it down through the ropes to connect that handle that end of the handle and then take this pin and make sure you leave enough lo looseness here to make a good handle. And I'm a little worried this handle's not quite long enough. So let me adjust this really quickly here. Add a little more cased rope. Yeah, I think that's going to be much better. Okay. And then I'm going to pin it where I want it to reconnect. So there is the handle. It doesn't look much like a handle right now, but it is. Actually, I'm going to make it one touch longer. This is the only chance I have to get this right, because once it's sewn and I've gone on with the coiling, then it is what it is. So, push this pin right down into place. Alright, so now I'm going to come in with my thread and I'm going to attach it firmly to the initiating point right here. I'm going to do several stitches in one area because that is going to be a stress point. Then what I'm going to do is use my needle and thread on the inside of that handle to stitch the two pieces together firmly so that it looks like it's one, one piece. And just a simple whip stitch is all I need. Now I'm running out of thread, so I'm going to knot off and 
thread a ne another needle. I just simply make a knot. See, people aren't going to be looking at the underside and the inside of this, so I don't have to worry about making it pretty, so to speak. I just want to make it sturdy and so that it lasts. So I made a knot and I tucked it under, pulled it snug. All right, I've re-threaded my needle and now I tuck that knot where it will not show. Trim the threads. And now I'm going to start back at whip stitching the two handles together. And I'm doing it, in fact I'm going to release this, put the pin right back to mark it. And this way I can whip stitch this nice and firmly and you won't even see it. And I had to figure out a method that allowed me to pull out a handle but not leave a gap in the coils of this, of this container. So I figured out how to do that. And I'll show you in just a moment. Whip stitch all the way to the end. Make sure to keep these stitches pulled tight, especially with the double quilting thread and the fabric. It's important to make sure you really have tightened your stitching. So now I'm going to take and pin it back again in place. And I had that pin marking my spot because you have to have just the right arcing to have the handle look right. Push this through and down in place. Okay, so now then what I'm going to do is whip stitch this in place right here. If any of you are working on the Jenny Beyer Stellaris, and I hope you are, I got my clues yesterday, and I can't wait to work on that. Once I finish these baskets, then I'm doing my Jenny Beyer Stellaris. It's always so exciting when, when the new clues come out. All right, so now that's in place. Now I can take this pen out. And I can take this pen out. And here is my handle. Okay, so now that we've put, the, now that we've locked this handle in place, I'll put one more stitch. Then we have to work our way back. We have to work our way back to here. So instead of cutting and knotting, I'm just going to run my needle in through the casing and work my way back. You would think it wastes thread, but cutting and knotting wastes thread too. And this saves time and effort. So now I've run my needle back through the casing so that I can be at the starting point for continuing the coiling. So now what I do is I bring this coil into place, bring the coil into place, turn it on its side, and continue the stitching down process, which are like big whip stitches in place. 
Now I've just noticed that on my coiling my seam has come apart here but don't worry I'll show you how to deal with that. This coiling takes a real beating with creating it between creating it and sewing it, it takes a beating and sometimes the seams will come apart so I will show you what to do but I make my stitches nice and snug and my stitches are nice and big and utilitarian they're not they're not for looks they're inside the container and I want to get this project done so I'm just stitching okay so now I'm bringing this coil see so there won't be a gap under the handle you see that now so I'm going to stitch right up to this point where the seam has opened up All right, so now I'm at the point the seam has opened up and all I'm going to do is run my thread under this opening in the seam and pull the edges together with the thread. And see how I go, see this part has the raveled part so I'm going to come and catch it above where it still looks good. Pull it in tight and it'll tuck that right into the hole. So it's not a big deal. And understand this is one seam of many in a coiled pot it's not going to really show. So I come over here I'm on the good side here and the good part here I pull the frayed edges together and there there you go you won't notice it. So now I'll run that needle back down to the bottom and I will come back and start tacking it into place again. And that way, in fact, it comes out right at the handle so you won't even notice it. All right, so then I continue my process. I'm, my process is to continue pulling the, drawing the rope in, drawing the neck of the container in. And then at the last minute, I will flare it back out, just like I did in my drawing. So, you see what I've got here? So now I've got two handles that match. I'll continue drawing the neck of the vase in and flare it out at the last moment. And I think I made a second length of the cased roping and it's a good thing because I think I'm going to use every bit. I wish I had measured to tell you how much it takes. It just takes what it takes. So, And every once in a while I'll come along and stretch it back up. And it's probably something where once it's made every once in a while reshape it because it is fabric after all it's fabric and rope alright so now I've shown you how to make the handles I will continue drawing this in a couple more rows and then I'll do a little flare and this basket will be done alright so I'll show you again when it's all done I'm working on the second basket and this one I'm going to try to do entirely by machine. So I'm doing the circle and stitching around and around with a nice zigzag and a neutral gray thread and just following around. As you can see it's pretty simple and straightforward and a lot faster than hand sewing I have to say. I just realized I missed a spot here and you can't miss a spot because then it will not be a solid basket. I 
Just go back and catch it. Keep going. I love that I put random colors because it's nice to see a new color come up. This is going to be my covered container. track again. I find that you have to make sure that the rope stays untangled so it doesn't pull while you're trying to feed it in. Now I hold it up because I want my basket to start. I want the sides to start moving up. It's working pretty good. I may have to change the camera angle in a moment because I don't think I can have it start curving up enough unless I put it the opposite way. But that means you're not going to be able to see it very well. But at least you can see now it is starting to curve up. I need to cut it because the way I was doing it, it's not going to make it work the best way now that I change the position. So I'm going to cut right here and then start a new piece 
back a little ways trying to make sure to ease that transition since I'm having to change directions but to get the sides to come up I need to sew it from this direction so I have room for the container underneath the arm like I was doing it before I just didn't have any room to sew it this is where sometimes being left-handed can be a little tricky but now it's much easier to bring the sides up and I'll show you in just a moment and I'll keep the raw end to the inside of the container and I'll show you that in a moment too See how nicely this this shape is coming up? Here I had to join two pieces of the coil together. So I just pushed one in inside the other to make it look like a continuous piece. Then I'll carefully, without pulling it back apart, put it in place and stitch it in. I want one more row around the top of this container. Run out of bottom thread. Okay. Okay. This is my third bobbin. Now this time, on my last trip around, I want to make this top of this container firm. So I'm going to kind of pull it snug to kind of pull it in. In fact, I'm going to go back just a little bit with this. I'm just cutting the zigzag stitches. I'm going to go back a little bit pull this in snug to have a nice, if I'm going to have a lid on this, I need a nice firm edge. 
I'm just cutting the threads, not the fabric. Okay, well, let me cut just a little bit more. And remember, I'm going to put the, this row to put this coil slightly on the inside and pull it snug while I'm sewing. And that'll pull that top edge in. And I'm going to widen my stitch length. And I'm going to widen my stitch length a little bit. Widen the zigzag amount. Because I'm going to be, you know, pulling this in is going to be a little tricky. So, let me get it back under my presser foot. And pull the rope, pull that coil onto the top. And let's see if I pull it a little snug. Let's see how it goes. But I've got to have a nice firm top row so that it will accept a lid. holding it up, pulling it snug as I'm sewing. I think this is going to work very well. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Okay. Now I'm going to cut it loose. And one thing I wanted to show you. I don't like it when they just end it and you can tell that it's been ended and it's got a lump here. So what I like to do is peel back the fabric, trim that rope at an angle. Everything you can do to kind of ease it in and that way when I sew this down there won't be an obvious lump. Tuck in the raw edges. I just kind of fold them under and finish stitching that last couple inches. Okay. In fact, I think I might give it another little stitching because I, I think that even shows up too much. Then don't forget, you have to go and shape this. I just saw an area that I had an opening that I didn't fully close. So let me go back and put this under and get that stitched. And to help reinforce the sides, I'm going to go around and give this another stitching all the way around where I want the bottom of the basket to be. 
just to kind of reinforce that this is where it turns. This is the side. out and oops I better get this electric cord out of the way now I need to tuck this down a little bit more that's still too prominent for my eye so I'm going to push it down tuck it in and stitch it down a little touch more Let's see if I can get a better look. All right. Oh, that looks much better. And I may even come back and do it a little bit more. But I think that's better now. So, I have to make sure that I have definite sides and as you can see pulling and tightening that top one did do a good job alright so this is my container and I may give this a nice press with a lot of steam help set the shape but I think if I steam it that will give it some really good shape all right now to make the lid I'm going to make my little coil and then I'm going to fashion a handle so let me make my coil and get it stitched. Then I'm going to go ahead and start winding this around. This time I'm trying to go the other way so it'll be easier. I'm hoping it'll allow me to turn the side. All right, let me... Okay... I had to change the sti stitch width and length from where I had it shortened. I had to lengthen it back out so I could make some progress. Alright, when I get a little bit further on, I'm going to make a little handle. Okay, I'm going to come out with this little loop here. As I get to this point, then it's going to switch and it's going to zigzag these two together. Okay. Kind of like I did on the other container. And I'm going to zigzag them together all the way to the end. Now, 
so I've got this odd shape and what I'm going to do is bring it around and stitch it down right against here so let me continue on around with my lid and then I will stitch down the handle in just a moment but this is a way I'm doing the handles so that I don't have to have a gap in the coiling okay so when I get all the way over to the other side I have to remember to then stitch it in I'm going to cut the thread here. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple little stitches down so that it will be in place. Okay. Now, bring back. There we go. That way I knew for sure it was in there solid. And when I come around to do this, now be very slow and gentle. This is a lot of layers to stitch. And then as I come around, I need to get this handle out of the way. But see, it was that easy to make a handle. And I think you'll surprise people when you put a handle on your containers. Because they will wonder how you made that work. And as you see, it is very simple. Isn't that cute? There, you've got your little handle. Okay, so now, the first pass around the handle is a little tough. You kind of have to push it in there. But once I get further and further away from the handle, it'll be a little easier. And now I just zoom along. Let me see. Get my foot pedal set up so I can just move on along. Because I've got things to do. handle is the cutest little thing and I'm so glad it came out in the gold part. Wasn't that neat? I couldn't have planned that any better. Yep, I ran off track just a little. Thank you, Pineapple Fabrics, for these strips. This is amazing. And what would have been considered waste by some people have turned into quite a lovely project.
Okay. Now I need to I need to take it loose. Aha! It is. I think it's ready to start moving down. So I'll finish this up to about here and then start moving it down. And I still think I ended up wrong. I think, yes, I'm going to have to end it and start a new piece to go the opposite way. I tried. It's okay. Live and learn. So I'm going to finish this piece to about here. So I'll go ahead and cut it. And remember what I talked about is pull the rope out a little. Cut a little bit of that rope off so you can ease it in so it doesn't look like a big lump. And I'm going to take and tuck in those raw edges just a little bit as we come around. Alright. seeing these threads let me trim these threads up all right and since I do have this little area there I think I'm going to start the side right well actually I need to start the side up here I'm just going to tack this with a couple little stitches all right then turn it and I want to make it a nice, sharp turn, too. I don't have that much casing left, and I've got to make it count. Now, here's a chance. I'm going around to that lump. I'm at the lump. It's a chance for me to push that in when I put the next coil beside it so that it'll be less noticeable. doing a pretty good job of turning. Sometimes you have to give it a little help there. And so what I'll do is when I come around again, remember I'll pull it a little tug to really define that edge. So I'm pulling. I'll start pulling now to define that edge. I'm down to my last little bit. So what I'm going to do is just keep sewing around until I run out. When you make this, you feel like you're making so much. But it uses a lot more than you would think.
And I'm going to tuck in these raw edges like this. Let me see if I can tuck these in. And then when I finish sewing, I'll have a nice neat edge. And I'm going to bring it up a little touch more onto the last row. Shape this edge again. Whoops, here's another thread. Cut any loose threads as you see them. Okay, here is my container bowl. I think it looks great and I think the lid works wonderfully. It's a very nice little bo box. So it worked out guys and it only took about a half an hour to sew. So you can't beat that. So, so here are my two containers. I, sh I shaped this one slightly different than the photo but I really enjoyed coming in with the stitching and then once I got ready to roll to the outside I switched from stitching down in the container to stitching from the outside and trying to hide the stitches pretty well but it's a cute sturdy little urn and this is my ode to Pompeii <laughs> so kind of reminds me of the mosaics in Pompeii but I love the colors in this one and this is going to give me a lot of joy and then you know my covered basket and I'm really tickled with that I think it did really well and contrary to what Mark said it's not a tortilla basket <laughs> But I think this turned out really well. The sewing on the machine was much quicker than sewing by hand. But I don't think there was any way that I could have gotten the shape in this one if I hadn't done it by hand. But it is a really cute, cute project. And I hope you'll try them. And if you do, send me a picture of your rope containers of your fabric bowls and and i'll put them up on the site so thank you very much and let's move to on to the next project